Hello, and you're welcome to join us on our next adventure of Sea Pigeon. We're heading west to Dartmouth. <laughs> The sea state is lovely, but there's a heavy mist in the air. We've dropped the Dodger to give us a better view of all the traffic that's surrounding us. It's still early in the boating season in the UK, and there aren't many people about. But it is a bank holiday, so we're expecting lots and lots of people. We pass by the town and head for the peace and quiet of the river. Here we are in Ditcham. This is one of our favourite anchorages. We usually tie up to a buoy, but this time we decided to anchor. As the tide retreats, we start to get a little bit nervous. But Neil knows what he's doing, and I have absolute confidence in his ability. Hi Neil, what are you doing? Filling in the logbook. I found last year we did uh, lots of miles, but we hadn't logged them all, so it's kind of nice to start logging our miles and it's it'll be an interesting thing when we're in old people's home wearing nappies to go back <laughs> through this High on the hill above our anchorage is Greenway House, Agatha Christie's holiday home. It certainly is a very beautiful place. Well, we're currently getting very shallow here. We have 1.6 meters normally is our draft and the tide is still dropping. The thing about the river dart is it sure does shelve off really quickly. 
but as you can see your thoughts Maxine? I have absolute confidence in your judgment Neil yeah we're getting close to the shore Oh, we're down to two now. So yeah, what would you do in this situation? Just a little bit further out, we're going to re-anchor again now, but uh, feel safer. Probably too deep of water now, 7.3 metres, but safety is the key, I think. Thoughts? Yes, I have absolute confidence in your judgment, Neil. <laughs> the next morning, we pull anchor and we head down the river to Dartmouth. We spent the next evening moored up on a pontoon. Our trip back to the X was fun and swift. Currently sailing totally downwing, which is called goose winging. And uh, yeah, rather pleasant. Decided to use the hydrovane to steer us on the way back. I love the silence of a hydrovane. The one thing about a hydrovane is it's not instant steering. It takes a little time to set you on your way. Course corrections are done by pulling on a piece of elastic which turns a worm wheel to adjust the hydrovane to balance into the wind. This gives a very slow, almost S-like path but wonderful piece of kit and also has a safety as a total independent backup rudder if you should need it. However, like all things on a boat it needs consistent preventative maintenance and I couldn't understand why the hydrovane wasn't responding when I was pulling the string on it. On closer inspection the pin that holds the rudder onto the main shaft had almost come out um, this problem is easily rectified by climbing down and removing the rudder. I would recommend if you have a hydrovane to have a safety rope attached to the boat that is then tied around your rudder. On the return journey we were a little too early for the tide so I made a stop off at Anstey's Cove near Babacom for a cup of tea. On our next adventure, we'll be heading further west, down into Cornwall. You're welcome to join us. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.